Never settle for bad coffee because you don't have to. There we have liquid gold. Today we are going to look at making coffees at home four different ways using uh, devices that are probably somewhere locked away in a cupboard at home or potentially on a bench. Never grind enough coffee for a month. That's way too much. A couple of days worth of coffee is probably the best way to go. Investing in a good grinder is probably the best option if you want to be doing this at home on a regular basis. But if you know what you're doing, you can get away with even a nut grinder. I've used spice grinders to grind my coffee. Let's get into the actual making of these coffees now. We'll start over here with the French press. And it's all about the grind. It is a quite coarse grind. Uh, this one is almost like cracked pepper. The trick to this one is to pre-warm, pre-heat the glass. And that's just using just normal kettle water. The reason for doing this is you don't want to have a coffee that's under temperature. I am going to add maybe six to eight of these teaspoons. We add our hot water. The other component here is to actually mix it through, just to actually start to get the oils extracting from the, from the grains. Put the lid on and it'll take maybe anywhere from three to five minutes to actually brew. What we need to do now is make sure we don't get any of that uh, coffee grain in our, in our liquid. So we gently pass the strainer through and it is gentle. As you can see, we've even formed a slight crema on the surface. Crema is um, what most people consider the true essence of the coffee. In my estimation, coffees that have no crema have a tendency to be very bitter. People will taste the bitterness before they taste anything else. The crema sweetens it off. With our pour over method, there are many different styles of pour over. The Haro filter, which is this variety, okay, is, is just something very simple, quite easy and, and, and quite cheap. We also have Vietnamese style fin coffee, which is very similar. With the fin, it's a slow drip method. With the pour over in terms of the Haro filter, there is a style involved. And that's where this gooseneck comes into play. And it's all about the actual rate at which you pour the water. So first things first, you need filter paper. The trick to this one is to wet it slightly just before you start. So initially we just dampen the paper because that'll help for that flow through the coffee into the paper and then into your glass. Once you've got it there, that's when then you will add your coffee. The pour over method is like a medium coarse grind. And again, that one is like raw sugar. You put a little bit of raw sugar between your fingers. The best method is to create a slight depression into the, into the top where you then start to pour your water. Okay, so we'll start right in the center and we gently just wet the surface and let that infuse into the coffee. As you can see, it's already starting to pass through and we wanna make sure that we've covered all the coffee all the, the actual surface of the coffee and, and wet it through. So this is a step-by-step -step process. It takes time, but the result, the end result is quite worth it because what you achieve is a very pure coffee. There we have liquid gold. And now we're gonna get into the mocha pot. The size here is almost like a medium size fine grain. There is this little vent, we fill it to the vent the top of the vent. This little filter basket is placed in the inside and then again we add our coffee. In this instance we actually create a little mound above the, the, the brim. So we just keep adding the coffee until we get that little mound. Try not to press the coffee down. Try to let gravity do everything and then you just twist it. Make sure it's locked on. With the heat, be careful. Try to just go to the perimeter of the actual pot that you're using. Don't go beyond it. As you can see, we've done that in the past and it's just scored the outside. It'll take anywhere between three to five minutes, again, for this to brew. It is slightly bitter, a lot more bitter than the other coffees. Remember, we're adding heat to this now. So we're starting to do something that will potentially 
draw out some impurities out of this coffee. So we've got to be very careful how we do it. Pushing it down too hard, adding too much coffee in there, is straining the coffee to try to get through. So be very wary, too much coffee will create a lot more bitter coffee. Once it starts to actually percolate through, remove the heat and then we'll actually even remove the base because otherwise it will keep cooking. It will keep heating and the coffee will then start to really turn quite bitter. If it starts to make that gurgling sound like it's, like it's drowning, um, you need to stop. Yeah, I think we're done. Okay, I better turn this off. We need to take the base off as quickly as possible. So with two towels, just twist it off, take the lid off, because what we want is for this to just now be hot coffee rather than still cooking. I'll put that aside now because I need my little hot plate to make my favourite, the Ibrik. This one is very personal to me. My mum taught me when I was three how to make coffees and I was the go-to person whenever relatives came over, I'd make them coffee. My mum's 94 now and the funny thing is, every time I turn up, she has to make me my coffee. In her eyes, it's, it's the only way she has left of expressing her love for me. To measure it, you'd normally measure it using a little cup. For every cup that you want to serve, you'd fill it up to about where that mark is and then it's a spoonful of the coffee. And it's, remember, this is super fine. This coffee is virtually like rubbing flour between your fingers. So it's really, really fine. The traditional method would be to actually um, warm this up on a bit of hot sand. What you do initially is you need to turn the, the stove on. I'm gonna place spoonfuls like this, teaspoonfuls like heaped. In this particular Ibrik now, a good three to four of these, like so. At this stage, if you have a coffee that has sugar in it, you would add sugar as well. Now, whilst it's in there, you'd hope you'd, hopefully you notice that I turned the flame on and got the, the water just heating up slightly. I'm now going to try and dissolve this into the water. And you swirl it and you stir it. The prescribed time, I generally go by your birthday. Mine's the 27th. So I will, I will spin this around 27 times. That's traditional, absolutely. I now let that brew as slowly as possible. I'll try to get my flame as small without going out as possible. But you must, must seriously take your time brewing it and don't leave it. You leave it for a second, it boils. And if it boils, don't drink it. The key to this coffee is to create that crema. That crema, is vital here because if you don't get crema in your coffee, the person making it for you is actually telling you something about the relationship that you've got. It doesn't exist. What you'll see is that the, the perimeter will start to close in. When it closes in, it's at that point before it actually reaches the boil that you take it off the heat. So now we've got our coffee. Just swirl it around a little bit. Right, so I'm just gonna distribute some of the crema. So everybody gets some. The person that doesn't get any, you have to remake it. It's, it's bottom line. Okay, and there we go. Four different methods, same coffee, different grinds, your choice.